Welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio, Business Building Warrior. I'm so glad you've chosen to spend a few moments with us today. We've got some pre-recorded content today since it's the weekend update, but it's probably content you haven't heard unless you join us on a regular basis for our live Monday night Q&A sessions with our entire community. Man, some good questions happen when we do that, and we'd love to share the questions and responses with you. That's what we do on our weekend updates. We'd love for you to join us some Monday. It's open to anyone in our community. The best way to hear about these and to get the links you need and participate is to be part of the free Facebook group. There's a link at silentgym.com to that free Facebook group. Jump in there. Most Mondays we go live. Quite often it's me. Sometimes it's some other folks on our leadership team answering any e-commerce or Amazon questions. Then we compile the best questions and answers into a weekend update for those who couldn't make it to the live session. So that's what we've got for you today. Hopefully you're enjoying your weekend. Thanks for taking us along. I'll cut right to the chase. Let's jump right into the content. Let's see what the team compiled for us today. Hey, this is Jim Cockrum. I'm the founder of the My Silent Team Facebook group. Thanks for joining me for this live session where we're going to take any of your Amazon selling or e-commerce questions And if you're joining me live, it's Monday, January 1st, first day of the new year. Love hanging out with you guys. I had a busy work day today, a lot of good things happening. If you're in our Facebook group, you may have noticed a whole bunch of people posting their amazing success results from last year. Telling you, days like this just make me so confident that we're in the right business. E-commerce is exploding. I was looking at some statistics just today that over the next, and these are round figures, but you'll get the point. Between now, here we are the first day of 2024 and 2026, just a couple of years from now, there's going to be around one and a half trillion dollars of new spending above what we saw in 2023, new spending in addition to that online in e-commerce. That's a lot of cash, guys. And about half of that money is going to be on one website spent on amazon.com. That's about half of all economic activity online. And that still only represents currently less than 20% of all retail activity in the U.S., uh, less than 20% is online. We're going to jump all the way up to 26 or 27% in the next couple of years. That's the forecast done by the pros who know what they're talking about. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of opportunity. That's what we teach you how to tap into here in many, many different creative ways, starting out with the same strategy where 99% of all of our At this point, thousands of successful students have started with the same starting point. That's replants. We love talking about it. We love teaching it. It's one of the main modules in the Proven Amazon course is the replants training. We've got multiple seven-figure sellers doing just that strategy. We've also got brand new sellers who were clueless a few months ago, and they're starting to ramp up doing a few hundred dollars a week, a few thousand dollars a week, everything in between. So no matter where you are in the spectrum of experience, we're probably going to start you with replans if you haven't had significant success in the past with e-commerce. So we're very proud of that program. It continues to grow and expand and change over time. We're always adding in new modules, new content, and it's the kind of course that grows with you is the best way to to describe it. We believe in just in time education versus just in case education, sometimes People ask us, hey, how long does it take to go through your course? And we'll say, it's kind of like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. You get to one end and you start over again and it's all you know ready to be worked again. The Proven Amazon Collection, it's a library. It's kind of like that, meaning you'll never actually complete the Proven Amazon course. We're always adding in new modules. We're pulling out outdated information. We're adding in new event videos from things that may have happened recently. The course is like a library of content. Think of it as like a Netflix subscription with everything you'll ever need. And it's right what you need when you need it. Instead of studying a whole bunch of stuff in case you need it someday, we give you what you need to take those next few steps with confidence to earn money while you're learning and to grow something nice, slow, and steady into what could very quickly become a beautiful business, multiple income streams. That's what we do here. Our podcast has hundreds of interviews with our successful students. Over the past several years, our Facebook group has a couple thousand at this point of success posts from our students who are doing the business, posting their results, 
We don't prod them or prompt them to do this. They're just excited to do it because we love inspiring each other, encouraging each other. We have an abundance mindset here, which means we see success as something that as many people who want it can have it. We don't see you as a competitor. We see you as a fellow business building warrior. Your success leads to more of our own success. So we want you to succeed because your ideas, your input, your connections, your insights, your inspirations are going to lift the tide for all of us. That's how we do things here. That's enough of the gym commercial for this week, I think. Hey, I'm going to start with uh, talking about the Kickstart, if that's all right. The Kickstart Bootcamp is uh, 37, 39, less than $40. Under on time. 40. That's what we say because we can never remember. <laughs> one time payment of under 40 bucks. Right. 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 What we're doing over there is we're taking people that have never sold on Amazon before. They need to get their account open. They need to figure out how to find something to sell. And we're going to take them through one cycle, one time through of getting, finding something, getting up for sale on Amazon, learning how to prep, prep and ship that into Amazon's warehouse, and put it up for sale. So um, that happens in, in a four week uh, boot camp that's in a private Facebook group. And I'm usually the coach that's in there that will take you through the four weeks and give you instructions for that four weeks to help you meet the goals of getting that one item sent into Amazon, get through that cycle one time. I meet with you live once a week during those four weeks where you can ask me questions live and you can ask questions in the Facebook group as well. So we're having a ball over there and we would love to have anybody who wants to go over there and just learn some of the basics and get your feet wet. Sounds great. Good introduction. Yeah. And we, we're seeing a huge participation. I think last I looked about 75% of all new proven Amazon course students elect to skip lunch for a day or two, which is about 40 bucks now, right? And sign up for this incredible experience that gets you, like you said, Robin Joy, from knowing nothing to sending in your first shipment, all those little details in between. And we're seeing a lot of these groups turn into like friendship groups of people. They almost form their own little mastermind and go through the rest of the steps together. That's tremendous. It's like an added on bonus. So yeah, definitely look into Kickstart. You can go to silentgym.com slash kickstart, silentgym.com slash kickstart. They'll give you all the details. It's just for new proven Amazon course students specifically designed to help you get up to speed fast because a lot of you have the same questions over and over and over again. You're not the only one going through those basic steps. So we're here to help on that. Brian, why don't you fill us in on what you guys have in mind for May? That would be what, 21st and 22nd of May 2024, right? Coming up. What do we got going on, man? Yeah, just about five months away. It's coming up fast already. Coming really fast. I'm on the planning committee. Trust me, I'm feeling the pressure. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the, what do we call it? A replant accelerator workshop. Love this. Um, after you've gone through the, the kickstart bootcamp, you understand the process, you've got your account set up, you know, how to like ship things in the, we're going to, you know, mash on the gas, so to speak, um, when it comes to finding items that you can test to resell on your Amazon account. And, uh, we typically will find that that can take anywhere between, I don't know, six to 12 months for a lot of the people to organically kind of check all the boxes, get all the experience that they need to kind of build that list up to a hundred ASINs that, that are replenishable for them while they're continuing to test. So last year, last, now it is really last year, last August, or no, it was a September. Actually, we did a, a, the, the uh, inaugural workshop version of this, where we basically take that content, that experience, everything that you learn over the course of six to 12 months. And we put it into two days. Now it's not going to be absolutely everything because we just just too much information to put uh, it all into two days but everything that you need to very quickly identify test worthy asins and start building a list a regular list so that you're sending in test worthy asins every single week five maybe ten a week so that uh you do start to see which one of those you can, which ones of those you can sell above the buy box, which ones of those you can uh, sell and add to your replens list, which ones of those you learned a lesson on. And, you know, you're, yes, you are going to sell it or no, you're not going to just a ton of great accelerant, if you will, to get things going with your, um, with your testing and your replens ASINs and love that workshop format because it's like everyone rolls up their sleeves. Right. And we really get down into it and we're doing a lot of Q and a live Q and a, so what we found uh, when we did this in uh, September was that a lot of great questions were asked by uh, 
all the attendees. And when they ask their question out loud, you could see the light bulb going off in other people's heads too, when they were like, oh, I hadn't thought about it that way. Or, oh, I didn't even think I would run into that. Or, you know, any number of reasons. I, I was telling Robin the other day, it feels like nobody wants to ask the stupid question. And so it takes uh, oftentimes one person to break the ice, but once they do, then all the questions come out. And that's when the, that's when the acceleration really starts happening. So really looking forward to that two days in Orlando, just prior to the proven conference. Um, it's going to be a phenomenal, like energy filled event. We're really looking forward to that. Yeah. I'm, I'm super excited. I was able to attend the one we did here just a few months ago and mm -hmm. even got in a fun round of golf with you and Matt and Nate. <laughs> yeah, it was, that was a great. Blast. Great yeah. weekend. Like mm -hmm. I want to make that a part of my annual routine just to get out there. Those guys are in Utah, right. beautiful place. You got, well, yeah. you guys are in Denver. That's beautiful too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the thing that this stands out to me, kind of like you just said about this environment is just the real time, the, the synergy and the connections and the people leaning over the shoulder and like, no, 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 you want to click here, not there. It's like, oh, wait, wait, you're actually still using, we had, actually had one person in the room. They were using the free version of Keepa and they're like, mm -hmm. man, I just can't figure this out. Like, Oh yeah, you actually have to subscribe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like Twenty bucks, and now you just got this. Oh, now it all works, right? So yeah, we just those little. I, I like to call them those little molehills that feel like mountains until mm -hmm. someone helps you. Yep. And you're like, why was I so worked up? That was such a simple thing. But in that setting, you can just fly through those, and I'm so excited. It's if for those who want details on how to, how to uh, what is it? Fill out the application. So mm -hmm. we've got, cause it's not for everyone. We want to have a conversation right. with you, but go to proven Amazon course.com slash 100, one zero zero. And that's the 100 ASIN workshop happening right before the proven conference, which is at the proven conference.com. If you want to look into attending there and they're both at the same resort, same place, same time, the workshop's going to be a small group. The event is shaping out to be our biggest yet. This is our 12th annual event. And I think we're going to have six to 700 there pretty easily. And, and just all kinds of people saying they're coming, bringing their families. SeaWorld is right across the street. It's going to be awesome. Hi, Jane. Uh, hi, uh, Robin, Joy, and Brian. I'm Che. Um, I just want to say thank you to Robin, Joy, and Brian for the podcast and knockoff team because um, I started selling on Amazon, but I'm Amazon UK like five months ago. So I'm one of those that I just want to do it on myself and see how is it like selling on Amazon. So after two months, I find that oh, it's something that I can do as a sideline. But I started with buying anything that I like, you know, just like anyone who started selling. Mm -hmm. So I bought things that I like. I bought things that I think it would sell and I started selling them on Amazon. Some things they sell, some things they don't. I still have it now in my um, inventory. Then I started listening to um, Robin Joy and Brian. And when they talk about the keeper, I was like, oh, that's something that I need to get it. So um, I follow what they the advice on the podcast and I follow it. And um, after two months, my sales is like three times of what I did in the first and the second months. So very thank you to both of you. So now, now actually I'm, I'm looking at um, getting some coach to guide me into selling uh, both on Amazon UK and Amazon in US. So I just like email some for support and then I'm trying to wait to get back to me so that we can talk about it. Yeah, that's all. I'm, I'm quite happy with what I'm getting now, even though it's still um, a small amount. It's like I'm getting like maybe like one, two sales in a day, but I can see the growth that I'm having from the first month to now. So I think as long as I have seen growth, I'm quite happy with it. Just that I, I want to make this into a long term, not really a business for me, but more of a hobby. I would say, <laughs> hopefully I can earn money from this hobby. Uh, yeah, I'm just getting into like looking for some coaches to guide me into selling into Amazon US. That's all about me, Che. Thank you. Very good, Che. Great to meet you. And I, I love your update. It sounds like you've got what we call around here proof of concept, that excitement where this goes from being theoretical to being okay, wait, I'm selling stuff online. I could see this turning into something. And, and I just want to challenge you a little bit too. Uh, if you're selling stuff and making money and serving customers, you've got a business. I don't care how small it is. It kind of reminds me of uh, like I've been running for what, 14, 15 years now. And sometimes people come and talk to me about running and like, you know, I'm not really a runner. They'll say, I've taken a few jogs, you know, I'm like, no, no, you're a runner. Call yourself a runner. The first time you go from walking to something faster where you've got your feet off the ground at the same time, <laughs> you're a runner. 
And so you've got a business. This is your business. And the only reason I say that is because if you treat it like a hobby, you'll kind of ignore it for weeks at a time and then go back and pick it up when you feel like it. Now, you can't really do a business that way. You're going to have to integrate it into your life in a regular, predictable, scheduled way, even if it's only five hours a week. It's scheduled, it's regular, it's consistent. You're doing what needs to be done. And the other reason I say that is if it's not growing, it's dying. That's one of the rules of business. So you want to make sure that you're doing what it takes to keep that thing moving at a nice pace forward. Uh, but yeah, give our coaching office a call. Actually, you can call us anytime. There's links and information at silentgym.com. You can also book a call on our calendar that's convenient for you. Book a slot to have a chat about coaching and see what we have to offer. The link is silentgym.com slash book a call, all one word, book a call. And you can sign up with a slot that's convenient for you. And someone from our team will, will give you a shout. You said you emailed us, so you should be hearing back from somebody. But that's a couple of ways to get our attention as well. The beginning of the year is going to be busy for us around here. We're anticipating a lot of growth this year. A lot of people are ready to start a real business. And that's what we do around here is help people do just that. So good to meet you, Che. Great, great work. And Brian, Robin, Joy, unless you have anything else to add, I love that first question. I love those softball questions. Like I didn't even make my brain work too hard right. for that one. <laughs> well, I just want to say congratulations because... To from going from that first sale to getting, you know, multiple sales per day is in a very exciting time. Pete, I read you without my glasses. I'm pretty proud of myself. Welcome, man. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Uh, thank you for taking the time on a holiday to uh, answer, some, answer some questions. So for context, I'm a complete newbie. I just got my Amazon seller account signed up about two days ago and working through the pack course. I think I've watched most of the replan videos and just started working on some of the, the advanced Keepa videos, trying try, try, try to put that into practice. And I guess, again, as a, as a brand spanking new newbie, I'm we're running, running into, I'm just running into where I'm restricted on things like on like, the brands. And like, I know there's certain categories that are automatically open, but I'm still like, running into even some like store brands that Amazon says I'm restricted. Do I just need to keep going, keep, just keep plugging away, looking for stuff? Or is there something I'm missing in the initial setup that you get a box you need to check somewhere? Nope, you yeah. need to quit. Amazon doesn't like guys named Pete. Uh -huh. Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, Brian, Robert, Joy, why do you guys take this? I mean, these, these are the kind of questions we answer a lot. I mean, I would say of the last 1,000 new students we've had come through, 999 of them have asked some version of the question you just asked us, and we've helped them navigate it without yeah. without a problem. So, yeah, Brian, Robert, Joy, why do you guys take this? You guys really specialize in helping new sellers with this with this sort of thing. Sure, I'll dive in since Robin's leaving her mute on. So Pete, the biggest thing probably is uh, category restrictions. So when you talk about store brands, most of the store brands, if you're not, uh, you're, you should be ungated out of the chute. If you're not, you may ask to apply and then you can become ungated if it's a category that you are approved to sell in. So there are just a handful of categories that, there we go. Um, Robin posted in there that are open to new sellers. And that does change from time to time. So um, just keep that in mind. But uh, for instance, if you were looking up a great value item that is a Walmart brand, but it's in the grocery category and you're not approved to sell in groceries, then of course it's going to say you're not approved. But any other like say home decor or home and kitchen item, um, and I can't come up with one of their brands off the top of my head that is in like in the home and kitchen area. But if you found one of those, that was a Walmart brand, you should be approved to sell that. Do I need, so I, like I, I was looking at like a Home Depot thing and I've seen some of that in the Amazon seller university there, they talk, they kind of go through that and have to apply to sell. And they want documentation. Are some of those store bands, so I need some of that same documentation, I need to buy it first and then for the different levels of Applying so yourself, in, in or... terms of be becoming approved or ungated when they're asking you to supply documentation, usually we, you, that's not required for a store brand. So I'm thinking of like, uh, so if you're doing Home Depot, like one of the store brands is Husky. So if you're mm -hmm. doing a Husky tool bag, you should, you should be approved to sell that. If you're not, you should be able to apply and they may approve you without additional documentation. Okay. If you're not, if they don't approve you, it's because they don't know Pete from anybody else. And they're like, right. yeah, your account just went live two days ago. We have zero trust with you right now. So Makes why don't sense. you do something to to build some trust with us and then we'll approve you to sell some other items. Okay. One other quick question, if I may, I've heard, I don't know if it's through podcast or different place, I've heard of, of this three-step check. Is that enumerated somewhere in the pack course? 
You can find that, Pete. And uh, if you look at podcast 612, I think it's titled something like I Can't Find Anything. At the end of that, if you look at it in YouTube instead of on the listening to it on the podcast, that there is a video explaining how we do that. But I would encourage you, Pete, to join us in one of the um, Kickstart boot camps because we cover skipped. all this information. Yeah, we're going to cover all this information. Cool. You're going to get that video included in there and a whole bunch of other stuff too. So those questions will be answered answered there. I would encourage you too not to hesitate to ask for permission to sell, you know, apply to sell anything that you want to. Amazon doesn't care how many times you ask. They don't care. So um, you're going to get... Okay. It's okay to kind of button smash yeah. the, the apply yeah. to sell. Okay. Cool. Absolutely. They don't care. What, what you're going to get is one of three things. It's either going to say, congratulations, you're approved just because you asked. We're letting some people do this right now. Great. Move on. Or you're going to get, watch this video and answer some questions. In that case, watch the video and answer some questions and then get approved to sell that. The thing where you want to pause is um, the one where Brian was talking about if they ask you to submit an invoice from a distributor manufacturer, you might want to hold off on that one. You're probably not going to be able to find that correct invoice every time. Anyway, eventually, as you sell, like Brian said, as you sell items, even if you didn't make any money on them and you broke even, Amazon's going to build that trust that they need to allow you, and they will lift those restrictions eventually. So work in those categories and brands that you're approved in to get some sales so that you can open up other gates as well. Okay, cool. Thank you. I really appreciate your... Because some people might be listening to this later, Pete, I want to just go ahead and read off the great list that Robin posted while Brian was talking of the categories where you're more likely to be ungated as a new seller. We provide this list frequently. You could jump into our Facebook group anytime, the My Silent Team group. There's a link at silentgym.com to that group. And you can just type in the word ungating or ungated, and you're going to see conversations on this subject that include the list I'm about to give you. But that list is home and kitchen, arts and crafts, office products, pet supplies, not pet food, not anything they put in their mouth typically, but everything else, pets. And then uh, we've got patio, lawn, garden, sports, outdoor, industrial, scientific. And I know I read that fast, but the list is posted in the comments. If you're listening to the podcast later, you can rewind and listen to that list or get into our Facebook group. We talk about it all the time because the nice thing is, and I just want to add one other specific note to, to this conversation because it, all new sellers experience this. Once you've sold 30 to 50 items, this becomes a molehill in your rear view mirror. Right now, it feels like a mountain that's stopping you. 30 to 50 items from now, it doesn't really matter what those items are. Amazon doesn't care if you made a profit or not. You'd be breaking even just testing, having some fun goofing off a little bit. Now they know you're sending in real inventory that matches the ASINs. You're not getting any customer complaints. Okay, the gates start falling open for you. And I would say nine times out of 10, when we encounter a product where we're, we're not approved to sell the brand of the product in any category now, Amazon just throws up that little, hey, do you want to be approved? Click a button. Hey, congratulations. Based on your selling experience, you've been approved. It turns into that quicker than you would expect. And, and you'll be just smooth sailing. So don't let that slow you down. Certainly don't let this issue. And definitely don't pay anybody any money <laughs> to help you get ungated. We've seen people pay $1,500 or more to get ungated in a category. It's just complete waste of money, not necessary. Good questions, Pete. Anything else on your mind, man? There's no one else waiting in line, so. No, not really. That's you good? Are well, you on a great track? My, my mountain of a molehill for today, so. Yep. Yep. And you've got a few of those to, to get over. Um, but the nice thing is, man, pretty much everything you're going to encounter on your way to a seven figure business is a molehill that we've seen many, many times. It feels like a mountain, but it's not. <laughs> That's the good news. So enjoy the I'm ride. Glad, I'm glad that you signed up for the Kickstart Bootcamp. And I'll be really interested to see what you think of that if that does help start answering your questions. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep, sure it will. We'll get back to the show in just a moment, but I have to tell you about a coaching program that's been around for about 19 years. It's coached almost 10,000 e-commerce business building warriors. It's got a team of about 60 coaches who are not only great teachers with tremendous hearts who love their students, but they're all succeeding at the business strategies that you hear taught on this show. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm talking about our coaching program. There's a link at silentgym.com. Get over there, get on our schedule, have a free consultation, zero pressure. 
We're going to help you build your business on that call. Sign up at silentgym.com, free consultation. See if our coaching program is a good fit for you, where you get to not only work one-on-one -on -one with one of our tremendous coaches, not only do you get that, you also get a reactive coach that you can contact at any point in time. That's a separate coach. You get all the training and content that we provide around here at no cost now and into the future. Tremendous list of benefits. I'm not going to go into all of them right now. Silentgym.com. Click on the coaching link, sign up for a consultation. Hey, let's get back to the program. I'm glad that you signed up for the Kickstart Bootcamp, and I'll be really interested to see what you think of that, if that does help start answering your questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah sure it will. I've got some stuff I can talk about based on things that are happening right now in the groups and things we're excited about until someone raises their hand or, or starts a new conversation. Let me just tell you the podcast episode that dropped today, January 1st, 2024. It's one we recorded a few weeks ago. Jim, Ed, and Andrew, a couple of great leaders emerging in our community. They're doing the Amazon Influencer Program. And what that entails, I had a long conversation with someone on the phone today. There's a lot of, there's a lot of misunderstandings about what it entails. So let me just break down the basics. Anybody could do it. It doesn't cost anything. You're just uploading videos to Amazon. And if people watch those videos and buy stuff, you get paid. Pretty incredible program. I mean, that, those are the basics of it. So it could be products that you've bought or products that you just like and already own. Or we have people that'll, you know, they'll go on vacation and they'll see an interesting item in a lobby of a hotel or the Airbnb where they stay. And they'll just review that product and show it the dimensions, the size, what it feels like, how to use it, that sort of thing. And just talk about the product upload that video to Amazon. And if that video ends up convincing somebody to buy that product, it doesn't have to be a product you sell. Just any item that you're interested in, you get paid a percentage of that sale from Amazon. And we've got people doing really, really well with that. Because around here, we're a multiple income stream community. We love sharing these complementary ways that you can add to your income without necessarily adding in a whole new, you know, plot twist to your lifestyle and your schedule and you know, we're not going to encourage you to go open a bakery and a cat grooming shop and, a, you know, a foot massage parlor, you know, at the same time. Like, no, we want these to be complementary business models that kind of tack onto each other nicely and create new income streams. So that's one of them. And the website for that is provenazinfluencer.com. We talked about it, like I said, in today's podcast episode, shared a lot with you. The value of being a part of that community and going through the course is it's going to be a very abundance-minded community with because... By its very design, this opportunity involves such abundant blue ocean, different directions that you can go that everybody can openly share. Hey, here's the videos I'm making. What do you think? We can critique each other's work, talk about the products that we're promoting, what categories working really well for us, that sort of thing. Because there's no limit to the number of videos that can be uploaded on any given product that we've discovered yet. So it's a pretty cool project. If anybody has any questions about that, happy to discuss it with you tonight. That's something we're working on that we're very excited about getting into the new year, there's a, a good handful of other projects we've got coming as well. I don't know if I want to dump all of them on you. I've recorded some podcast episodes lately where we just talk about as a proven Amazon course student, all the new modules that are coming. Brian and Robin Joy are working on some content, revamping some of the stuff that's, you know, after things about a year or two years old, we'll often go back and take a look at it and go, all right, let's revamp it a little bit, make the screenshots look a little bit more like what Amazon looks like. So we don't have anything out of date. We just have nice new versions of the stuff that's working. We purge it out if it's, if it's old, we add in new. So your proven Amazon course is really a library of what's working now and what you'll need in the coming days to create new income streams as you continue to systemize and grow. So lots of good things planned. There's never been a better time than right now to get in on a proven Amazon course. If you're not a student yet, it's $39 a month. It's all you'll ever need as a member of this community, unless you elect to get some mentoring and some coaching to go forward faster. We'd love to answer questions about that if anybody has. What's it involved in, with coaching? That's a popular question on these Monday nights. What's involved? Who's it for? Am I well positioned for that? I'd like to hear more about the system. It's, it sounds very intriguing. And yeah. I'm newer at this than Pete. So Pete, you're ahead of me. Sure. So you know, if there's anything I can, can do to help with that, I've got a background that might be useful. Programmer? Um, 
Oh, uh, well, yeah, software QA, systems engineering, that sort of thing. So I know how to break things pretty easily, so pretty well. But if there's, you know, if there's something I can, can do to that, you know, and I'd like to find out, you know, if I can help out and if there's, you know, if I'd find out more about it in general. I love it, man. Yeah, that's one of the projects we're we're very excited about in 2024. If you haven't listened to podcast episode number 754 yet, I'm calling it easily one of my top three or four favorites of 2023, if not my number one favorite episode of 2023, simply because I've got a, I've, for a few different reasons, I've got a strong relationship with the the guest that we interviewed. This is just a few days ago as we're recording this, you know, this is like two or three episodes behind the one that came out today. So very recent episode. But Kang, who's become, like I said, a dear friend, we've corresponded a lot, an emerging leader in our community. He has a $3 million replens business doing the stuff we teach in the Proven Amazon course. But what's different about his business is it's been, his role has been reduced to swiping down to reset his stats a few times a week when he feels like it. <laughs> That's it. Completely automated with what we're calling the system, right? You can go to silentgym.com slash the system to see details because you may be hearing this audio after it's launched right now we're kind of in a pre-launch phase we're training some of our great leaders some of the top coaches on our team how to use this system that kang has developed and like rich just mentioned it is a software-based solution for replen sellers that's very a to z it does some really cool things that those of us who've been doing replens for a while will really appreciate such as it keeps an eye on all your old asins and kind of taps you on the shoulder when one of them becomes worth taking a look at again. It monitors all that for you. He's got a warehouse. He does all his own prep. He's got two guys running a $3 million operation with over 1,500 different products. Two people. Those of us who run prep centers or run our own prep are, are saying, wow, that's incredible. Just two people to run a $3 million operation and then one one and a half virtual assistants doing some of the rest of the work. That's it. And the rest is, and it's completely automated. So this is a software solution. You can hear more about on podcast episode 754 at silentgym.com slash the system. That's where you can kind of get on the notification list. And Rich, to go to your question, we love seeing leaders emerge around here and help build and support and grow this relatively flat organization. We don't have an org chart where like you come in and you're under, you know, Robin Joy's assistant to her assistant to the assistant. You're like, no, this is a flat organization. Like if you've got something great to share and you've got a skill set, hey, bring it to the party. We do have a vetting process and we are going to, to test and prove. We take that word very seriously. Proven is a big deal around here. We're not perfect at it, but over the years, we've proven pretty proficient at keeping out the, the stuff that's just not going to work at scale and only bringing in the stuff that's good. So what I would encourage you is learn the systems, get your business rolling, get some momentum that gets you the credibility of what we have going on around here that you, you grasp the basics. And then, yeah, the sky is the limit. It's wide open to step in and offer suggestions for solutions, for new approaches, new strategies. And, and if you experience our proven conference in Orlando, you'll see, you know, it's 40 breakout sessions and, and many of them are people who've never spoken on stage. Or if they have, it was one time last year at our previous event. And what got them there was they built a beautiful business using the stuff we teach. They've got a teacher's heart. Welcome to the spotlight. Welcome to leadership. Tell us how to do things better. You're on the team. So that's, that's that rich. And as you start to see this system kind of rolling out, you know, we welcome your feedback. One of the things that Kang and I have said, and it's going to be, um, uh, a point of emphasis is there's going to be a Facebook group for all the users of this software, and we're all going to pick it apart constantly. And like you said, try to break it, okay. improve the user interface, improve the functionality, make it as useful as possible at the lowest possible price point for as many people as possible. I really think, and Brian and Robin Joy, I don't know if you've, if you've guys heard me say this yet or not, but I think we're going to be the group that flips the switch and takes the replens model from a, you know, kind of a, beginner, newbie, like, yeah, you do that until you have a real business, right? Kind of an impression in the industry to being something that's bought and sold actively. Because I could make a strong argument right now that Kang could put his e-commerce Amazon business on the market and somebody would pay him for it because it's very turnkey at this point. It's a matter of monitoring the software and the business runs. Put a couple guys in a warehouse, get a VA, sell the business. It keeps right on rocking. 
right? So I think that's going to flip the switch and suddenly we're going to have a lot of people, you know, talking about buying and selling each other's replens businesses with this software. And we haven't had anything like that in the industry yet. That It's a maturing opportunity. And I think this, this is going to get us over the edge. Uh, Kang's a sharp dude, man. He ran a, I always say nine, I think it was a nine figure. I want to say nine figure. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't just an eight figure. It was a nine figure business before he came into replens and he ran the whole thing on software that he and his team had developed. So he knows his stuff. And something else that makes that episode very special, 754, is the fact that just a few months ago, he lost his son. He's got three kids and his son at a very young age passed away. And we spent some time diving into like, how do you recover from that? What possibly compels you to move forward in light of that? None of us would have held it against him if he had just taken a year off to be with his family. But he's with his family. He's doing what he loves, serving this community, building a great system, just a great emerging leader. And you want to come hear him at the conference as well in Orlando. A very moving story. And I'm just so proud of him. I really am. I, I, I'm honored to have played a bit of a, a mentoring role and a friend role as he's gone through some pretty crazy stuff. But his family's closer than they've ever been. And he's pouring his heart into this community. So yeah, good stuff, Rich. Thanks for bringing it up. I, as you can tell, I can riff and get passionate about just about anything in this community that's going on at any given time. And there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great to meet you, man. All right, you too. Thanks, Rich. I know you. I'm a Yoon. Yeah, we've talked to you before. Hey, hey. Thanks, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you. Sir, uh, most, I'm still struggling with finding replays, and most of the times when I find an item, like you said, that find those listings that can uh, list the item under those listings that you can make the profit. And when I find, when I see all the other listings for the same item, it's all under generic or they make another different brand name that's not even the brand, that the item is not that brand. And under the original brand, when I see, I don't uh, make any profit. But when I see the other people, they are listing under different brand names or generic names. And I don't know if I'm able to to do that, to sell under those generic listing or different brand names. So, no, I would avoid anything that says generic. That is uh, probably your best bet of getting your account flagged for review of, of some sort. So, and actually, you probably can't even, you may be able to add it to your inventory, but I'd be surprised if they actually let you send inventory in to Amazon. So just skip over anything that's generic. You'll also see some items, let's say that it was a like a water bottle. And this is a, I don't know what the brand of this one is, but it's Adidas. Okay. Let's say that Adidas water bottle that I could get at Walmart for $5.99 and potentially sell it right on Amazon under the Adidas listing, but I'm not approved to sell Adidas. So then what someone will do to kind of get around the system is intentionally misspell the brand or add an extra character or something like that to the brand because they want to sell the one that they have and they're not approved to sell the other one. Right. That's another thing you, that you will do. If you do that, that you will get your account flagged and eventually, maybe not tomorrow or next week, but eventually that listing will get taken down off of Amazon because it's not it's not right. And you don't want to misrepresent Adidas on the platform. So when you run across those where it's just like, you're not approved to sell any of the brands, even if it says generic, just assume you're not approved to sell that because that will get you in trouble. Just there are over a billion ASINs on the amazon.com platform, right? And I get the frustration, no more. Like Robin mentioned that, uh, that podcast episode 612, I was that person for like four months. Like, why can I not find anything? And so I, I, hit, I feel your pain on that. Eventually, if you look at a lot of, if you look at a lot of listings, a lot of ASINs, you'll start to find some. And then the pieces of the puzzle kind of start to come together. And here's an idea that maybe we'll start to, um, to put it together for you. If you were to sit down and put together like a thousand piece puzzle, you know, like a jigsaw puzzle, Right. How do you start when if you if you've ever put one together? What do you have a strategy when you're going in to start putting one of those together? No, no. Normally, what we are looking for is like edge pieces, right, or corner pieces, and and then a color 
like a, a general color so we can kind of build a frame around the outside right. and so that, that building that to frame around the outside is like the foundation kind of the starting point but if there are only a, about 120 corner or edge pieces in that whole box of a thousand pieces so only about 10 percent of the pieces in there are going to be what you're looking for to go around the outside but you might have to look through all 1000 pieces to find those those so think of uh asins like puzzle pieces right okay. you might have to you might have to look at a thousand and just know that uh, tell how do you say your name humayun 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 this is going to be your competitive advantage what you're going to have over most other people who don't understand, like they shop from leads lists or they, I don't know, they, they've got their friend's private label item or whatever it is that is a probably a short-term play. When you learn how to find the ones that are out there, then you're going to have a competitive advantage over everyone else who is doing this, except for me and Jim and Robin joy because this is what we do too but <laughs> but in this there's a there's room for all of us in here to do that so i know like i don't know how long you've been doing it but just the amount of time like for me it was a solid four months of struggle before things really started to start to make sense to me and so i hope you would at least give yourself that chance of of that kind of time and and look and ask questions and and, and uh you know, come to these, come to these sessions and would be even great as to like, if you've got an example of, well, here's one I was looking at, but you know, I think Robin and Joy, Robin, Joy and Jim would be happy to, to discuss those. If I don't happen to be here, I'd be happy to do it too. The very specific ASIN level questions. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Thank you. Let me just take a stab too here. One of the podcast episodes I want you to go back and listen to, or really listen to, if you've already heard it, 554, 555 and 612. Go back and listen to those. Anytime someone says, I just can't find anything, I'm like, go back and listen to them. I already heard them. Go hear them again. Because those really do get to the heart of what we're talking about around here. 554, 555, and 612 at silentgym.com. Go listen to those episodes. Because I'll give you a very specific example. Well, you know, we've talked about these Monday night meetings, Brian, like you just referenced. We had some guys showing up here. It's their twin brothers, Jerry and John. And they would show up, one of the two of them or both of them, for about six weeks. I'm like, man, I hope these guys... I hope the, the light switch flips because they would show up and ask a different version of the same question most weeks. I just can't find anything. I hear it. I've listened to the episodes. I just can't find anything. And now suddenly they are putting up these, you know, they, they posted a success story in the group yesterday. I mean, this is just a couple months ago. They were confused. Now here they are putting up this huge December. The light bulb finally clicked on. And it was from me saying things like this that started to help them. They're like, Jim, okay, what are you looking for on your team? Well, now, I take a little more risk than most people do, but if my team comes to me and says, hey, Jim, we found an ASIN. It drops X number of times per month. Is that number bigger than 30? If it's 30 or more times per month, I'm still paying attention. Next question. Can we break even at approximately buy box price? That's a big question. It takes a little bit of math. You can do that math in about 15 seconds with some practice. It'll take you a minute or two, maybe even until you've had some practice. If you can break even a buy box and it's dropping more than 30 times a month, I'm testing it with one or two units at a high price that's profitable to me. Listen to that on replay. Listen to me say those words 30 times if you have to, because most people, the problem they have is they're overcomplicating it. They're looking for profitable products and they're stuck saying, this bag of marshmallows costs $3 at Walmart and it costs $3 on Amazon. There's no profitable products in the world. You don't understand the game yet. You got to understand, what if I tested that bag of marshmallows at, say, $6 or $7 or $15 on a two-pack? Maybe I'm not selling 10 packs a day, but I could sell two or three a month because some people want it fast. That's that podcast episode 554, I'm telling you. Until you grasp the concepts of episode 554, you really kind of limited because you think you're looking for profitable products. And that's just one insight. That's just one replant strategy. So I understand your frustration, but there are so many solutions. And uh, it's more a matter of taking off the, the glasses, like just imagine glasses that allow you to only see 10% of the world. Like what a relief would be to one day just like take those off. That's kind of what it feels like once you get it. And then you can just really take off fast. So you'll get there. You will get there for sure. But if you're, if you're kind of price comparing and looking for winning products, you're kind of stuck in the wrong mindset. Go listen to those three episodes again until it kind of clicks. And you're, you've got the content in the course. You're picking up those skills. You're going to get there. 
Yeah, great okay. call out, Jim, too. Thank like you. 554 wasn't around when I was starting my first four months, right? Mm -hmm. And I was doing probably what a lot of people do, which is the current buy box price versus the sticker price of that item and going, well, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. And you can find and winners that way if you look long enough. You can. It, it, There's that's a lot what of I did. That's why maybe, maybe it took four months. I think to your point, maybe it doesn't take four months if you're evaluating it slightly differently, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. By lots of winners. I, I've posted 70, almost 70 examples from my own selling account in the past few weeks of ASINs where the buy box is break even, but I'm making money selling between three and 30 units a month, way above buy box. So if you're looking at the buy box price as the price that your item is going to sell for, you don't understand what buy box is yet. Buy box to me is worst case scenario only, and very seldom do we rely on it. We're going over it hearing from all kinds of people. Once that lesson clicks, it really starts to make a lot of sense. But yeah, until it does, you go from like, I can't find anything to, there are millions of tests worthy ACEs. Like you could take any store shelf picture in the US from an authorized retailer and show me 20 or 30 products in that picture. I guarantee you, I could find 50 ASINs worth testing based on a couple hours, a few hours of, of bunny trailing off of those brands and the items on that shelf. Whereas most people would scan all those barcodes and say, nope, no winners here. They sell for the same price on Amazon, right? So that it's just, it's a different skill set. It's a different way of seeing the world and we can use all the words, but until those glasses are pulled off of your face, you're like, oh, wait a second. Okay, those 20 items on that shelf represent 50,000 different ASINs and a lot of those are worth testing, right? It, it, until that ha has happened, it, it it can seem a little daunting and confusing, but it gets easier. I promise. It absolutely does, Jim. And that is one of the things that we really dig into in the workshop that we were talking about before this is going to be happening in, in May is that we, we talk about ASINs and we look at them together and decide mm -hmm. which ones would you test this? Would you not test real live ASINs? Would mm -hmm. you, or would you not test it? And why, why would you, and why would you not? And this is so, this is why people come to the workshop because they need to get that down. And it's very difficult listening to video videos and, and, you know, just kind of asking questions in the Facebook. This is where you can really immerse yourself in that process and understand really what you're looking for. It'll change the world for you if that is the problem. And we'll help you make a plan to make that profitable overall as a whole business. Man, I can't wait. May is going to be phenomenal, man. I'm just so excited. We've done this 12 times. You think we'd get a little monotonous, like, ah, here we go again. But this event is shaping out <clears throat> between the keynote speaker, what, what Kang has, the 100 ASIN workshop with you guys, all the new strategies we're first time presenting at the conference. It's going to be fantastic. All right, Brian, I'm going to let you take uh, this question because this is a person that's that's just been in one of my Kickstart boot camps as well. So why don't we give give him your perspective? Okay, sounds good. Yeah, th th thank, thank you, Robin. Yeah, it was it was great. I I really loved that uh, Kickstart uh, course. We learned a lot, a lot of questions solved. Thank you so much. Yeah, so my question uh, today is. I found an ASIN that um, there is uh, one FBA on it, and there are tens of other FBM. The, 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 the thing that makes me to doubt, the FBA is lower price, but the FBMs are higher price, like the different price of $20, $30. Um, do you think that worth testing FBA? If I would test that, I have to price above the other guy who is FBA. Because, um, other than that, it wouldn't make any, any, any money. You would have to price above the other FBA person? Yeah, so I'm matching the FBMs, but they see the FBMs selling. Like, like when you go to Amazon seller and see the number sold, yeah. they are selling a lot. But the FBA is not doesn't show any sell. That's kind of strange because all the FBAs, FBMs are selling that are higher price, and they are FBM. But the one who is FBA and lower price, he didn't doesn't show any sell. Did you check the? delivery window or when the when you would get it as a shopper for the fba offers versus the fbm uh not that there are like 20 of fba fbm there and only one fbm fba 20 fbm like only one fba 
So I see, we do see this frequently when, and a lot of times we'll see it from people that I've like other uh, stores that I've been competing against on Amazon for a long time, but the FBA offer will seem really low, but it's not really available for three, four weeks because the person just got it in a box like two days ago. And so it's on its way, but Amazon is saying, yeah, it's available, but it's not going to, you know, at this point we're January 1st. So let's say, yeah, it will say, uh, available with an estimated time frame of like, uh, January 29th to January 31st. Okay. So that's almost uh-huh. a whole month, a whole month out. And so if their price was 20 bucks and I got to wait a month for it, or I can pay $25 and get it this Friday, I'm going to pay $25 uh-huh. and get it this Friday. So that's, that could be one reason that the FBM are selling and the FBA is not. The other thing that I see frequently in that space is that the FBA runs out of stock frequently. And so the FBM offers are sitting there kind of as a backstop and they're just kind of waiting for that person to run out of stock or, or have a, a very delayed shipping date. And then they're making sales in between. So as an additional FBA offer on the listing, um, I would say this, it's worth a test, right? As long as, uh, okay. as long as you can break even on this at worst case scenario, it's worth a test. Don't overthink it. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate it.